This is the cheapest electric sports car in the world. At this price, I would have three. No, seriously, I would definitely buy one at this price. My friends, check this car out. It's seriously cool for the price. Amazing stuff. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Indonesia. Normally though, I live in Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. Hope you've had an amazing day. This new electric sports car really kind of proves the naysayers, the haters, proves them wrong. I mean, 13,000 US dollars for this car. Seriously? Honestly? I'm excited. This is the new Quan 2 K20. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but who cares? That's how it reads in English. It's a new two-seat electric sports car from China. And I've got to say, it looks like a very practical sports car. Looks great. The long bonnet, that's not so practical, but it certainly looks nice. It starts at 13,045 US dollars, caps out for the top model at $22,000. I mean, for example, right, if you want a similar car that'll do a similar speed, which runs on gas or petrol, you'd be looking at a Toyota Supra, right? Similar performance to this, seriously. But you could literally buy three or four of these, depending on what country you're in, for the same price as one single Toyota Supra. When you put it in that kind of context, you've got to admit, this thing's pretty damn rad. So what do we know about it? Well, it's just gone on sale in China for deliveries in September of this year. It's 3.75 meters long, 3,741 millimeters, 1,624 millimeters wide, and 1,263 millimeters tall. So it's not a big car. Wheelbase is 2,326 millimeters. The Quantu K20 has a dual motor four wheel drive system. Total power output of 160 kilowatt and torque of 290 newton meters. Sounds anemic, right? That's the base model. The top spec has a 435 horsepower output and 680 newton meters of torque, which is quite a lot for a car that weighs only 800 kilos. It'll do zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds, and it has a range of 380 kilometers. Now, apparently the top speed is 200 kilometers an hour. I think this, the most similar car you can compare this to, even though it's a different size, is probably a Mazda Miata or a Mazda MX-5, as we call them here in Australia. Now, in this single motor variant, it weighs only 780 kilos, and it comes with bezel-less doors, and users can choose between either the convertible model or the hardtop model. Now, I personally, I think I'd probably go for the hardtop, but hey, if you want the kind of Mazda Miata experience in an electric car, you could get the convertible version. Now, they do have a long range version, which apparently will do 500 kilometers of range, and it comes in all wheel drive. Also, if you want to reserve the car now, if you're in China, if you pay 200 RMB, which is only like 30 bucks, something like that, then you'll get 2000 RMB put towards your purchase of the car when it comes time to pay the rest of the money when you pick the car up. But probably the best thing about this vehicle period is the fact that you get a lifetime warranty, which is crazy. Lifetime warranty actually covers the battery, the motor, and all the electric controls. And this comes for consumers who order it during the pre-sale period. So if they order between now and September, you get a lifetime warranty for all those parts of the car. And that's the main parts of the car, really. Now, interestingly, you can also rent the battery. I'm not sure how this works because it doesn't look like you can easily remove the battery. But if you want to rent the battery, it costs 20,000 RMB, which is about 3,000 US dollars for the standard range pack or 30,000 RMB, which is about 4,300 US dollars if you want to rent the long range pack. Now, if I'm honest, I think the interior looks a bit average, a bit, you know, not the best. There's certainly a lot of other electric cars with much nicer interiors for this price. But considering the specs and the features at the price, it's still not too bad. Now you can see it's like a big stretched iPad in front of the driver there. The steering wheel has a flat bottom, 
kind of giving it a semi-sporty appearance. The seats to me don't look like the seats that should be in a sports car. They look pretty unbolstered, very flat. I mean, if you're going around a corner fast, you just slide across and probably slide out of the seat. So realistically, they're going to need some different seats in the car to make this thing an actual sports car. So you're probably thinking, who is this company? Are they legit? Well, Quantu's first model, the K50, was launched in 2018. But it was really expensive, didn't sell very well, so they stopped selling those a little while ago. They discontinued that model at the end of November in 2020. And clearly since then, they decided, well, the market needs good value electric performance cars. And even though this car really, you know, it's missing in a few areas, the interior doesn't look very good. Those seats, clearly, are not sports car seats. That said, I mean, you could easily fix those things. And if you're only paying 13,000 US dollars for the car itself, even if you went to the $22,000 dual motor version, it's still an absolute bargain. 500 kilometer range, zero to 60 miles an hour, dual motors, and, you know, 22,000 US dollars for a pretty practical looking little sports. I think it's really, really cool. But what I want to know, what do you think of it? Do you like it? Hate it? Love it? Would you buy one of these if you could? Personally, I probably wouldn't. But to be honest, if I won the lottery, I would for sure. Why not? I mean, hey, something fun at this price? Heck, why not do it? However, I've got to make a point here. Chinese automakers are one-upping Legacy Auto in one big way that I mentioned a couple of times. Yesterday in one of my videos, also today, lifetime warranties. These lifetime warranties we're starting to see from several different Chinese companies, including BYD, need to be recognized. Why? Because honestly, the reality is, Legacy Auto don't offer that and have never offered that option. Never. Never in the history of Legacy Auto have they ever offered this feature when you buy one of their cars. And that is a big selling point for a lot of people. If you have a lifetime warranty on the battery and the electronics of the car, they're the things that cost pretty much all the money. That's what you're paying for. Lifetime warranty on that, that is simply incredible. And I've got to say, really good to see because it's going to force Legacy Auto to compete with them. It's going to force them to say, all right, well, our competition's doing that. We have to do the same. So I look forward to that happening. Let me know in the comment section below what you think, though. Would you consider one of these? Do you like it, love it, hate it? Let me know. As always, have a great day. I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.